Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Morning Yoga Therapy. Today, we're working with the hips today, working on strengthening the outside of the hips and flexibility, strengthening the inside, the adductors, and working with the hip flexors, so as. Um, energetically, we're working with hip balance, a balance between strength and flexibility, Yoga Sutra, Chapter 2, 46, uh, 47, those two in particular today. Just going to start with Yogena Chittasya. If you want to think about an image of balance or if you know what Patanjali looks like, he has a head of a thousand snakes, white snakes, and a human body from the shoulders down. That's what this prayer says. And he is the one who compiled the Yoga Sutras for us. Yogena Chittasya Padena Vajra Malam Sharia Rasya Chalvaidya Kena Yo Pakaro Tam Pravaram Munina Patanjali Pranjali Rana Tosmi Abahu Purushakaram Shanka Chakra Sitharinam Sahasra Shirasam Shwetam Pranamami Patanjalim Shri Mate Anantaya Nagarajaya Namo Namaha. I'll repeat this last part Namo Namaha it means I honor. I honor all the yogis from before Patanjali to Patanjali and since who have given us this practice, this indigenous practice from India. Namo Namaha Namo Namaha Namo Namaha Releasing the hands down. Feet together if it's comfortable. <clears throat> Inhale, arms coming up, radiating like the sun. And exhale, again, that water element. We're in the second chakra area today. The hips, pelvis. Inhale, radiating like the sun, bringing that sunlight into your system, radiating out of the heart center. Exhale, like a waterfall from the head down the front side, back, body, all the way to the legs and feet. And keep this going. And if it's comfortable adding the toes, getting into that balance of left and right, And it's a modification of bending the knees and this allows us to feel the legs and feet a bit more and ground our energy. So you can add that or not. Doing this in your own timing. Pausing between inhale and exhale. Inhale, filling up with prana, energy, vitality. And exhale, apana, letting go any obstacles of the mind body.
If it's comfortable staying at the top, breathing, you can be on the toes or not. You could have a block between the thighs if that feels better for you. You could have a belt on the ankles if that feels better for you. And the arms can be adjusted. Palms on top of the head, arms at the side, hands on the shoulders, hands behind cross, lots of variations, interlock fingers above. When you're ready, coming down. And inhale, coming up, we're gonna go into side bends. You can come up onto the toes or not. And exhale, coming towards your left side, staying up in the toes if you can, and coming down, getting into that side body. And invite you to stick your hip out to get more into that QL area. So maybe rib cage all the way to the lower back and hips you're feeling. Inhale, center, exhale, other side. So again, the longer you can stay up in the toes, that's just really working ankle strength. And just do that side to side. And this pose is very much one about balance. Like pendulum moving side to side. Very soothing for the nervous system. Stimulating one side of the brain, opposite side of the body at the same time. And when you feel ready, you're gonna stay on one side. So in this position, you can cross one foot over if you like, you might hold the elbows to get a little deeper in there. Just breathe here. You can also take this to the wall. So. And you might cross as I'm doing the opposite foot. So I particularly like this one for getting into the QL, quadratus lumborum, and of course the lats, IT band. Intercostal muscles between the rib cage, all those things. And going to the other side. Here. Just finding your pose. I'm going to do it at the wall. Really trying to stick the hip out so you go into the hip lower back area. Try to keep at least the exhale long. And I invite you to go back to if you have one side that was tighter than the other, just go to that side and stretch it again. So whatever that is, for me it was my second side. So I'm going to do that again. So whatever side you found to be a little tighter, just do that side again, a little extra. Play with the feet what foot you want to cross. Oh, you're ready coming out. Okay, so let us do a forward bend after all that. We're going to start with just a simple spinal stretch. 
at the chair. So bringing your hands to the back of the chair, make your back nice and long and just bend your knees as you exhale and inhale, straighten. This is just to give a little traction to the back. If you have a lower back problem, some of you do. We're moving more into that next week, but today is a little precursor to it. That this pose can really help. My Iyengar yoga teacher called this spinal stretch, but also alignment pose, she called it. It's, it just realigns the spine. And bending the knees, that gives the lower back a bit more traction and then weights into the hips. This is really good for the hips to bend the knees and squat. This helps balance them. And when you're ready, coming out of that, we'll come back to that. No pun intended. So we're gonna do some forward bends with the feet crossed. I'm gonna start with the left foot behind the right. And if um, it's not comfortable for you to come all the way down, you can use your chair, okay? So inhale, radiating like the sun. And we're gonna exhale with an ohm two times, two rounds of ohm. Oh. Inhale. Radiating like the sun, exhale, waterfall. Oh. Next one, Om Namo. Om Namo. Inhale, radiating like the sun, exhale, waterfall cleanse. Oh, no. <clears throat> Morning frogs. Om Namo Namaha. Oh, Namo. Namaha. Again. Oh, Namo. Namaha. Inhale up. Exhale, Samastiti. that bothers your knees or any other part of your body, you're welcome not to cross, of course, okay? The other side, and some of my students just come to the chair because it's too much to go all the way down. Inhale, coming up, again, two rounds of Om, two rounds of Om Namo, and two rounds of Om Namo Namaha. That gives you six. Om. Oh, Om Namo. Oh.
together, samastiti. Exhale, rest. Notice how you feel. You might notice right now you're weighted on one foot a bit more than the other. So you might be weighted on your foot that was in front of that last pose. So let's even that out. Forward bend with both legs. Inhale, arms coming up, radiating like the sun. Exhale, coming forward. Oh, no, no. Can you keep that going or just stay here and breathe? You could be doing this at the chair, your hands on the seat of the chair in a downward dog kind of position or closer with your head on the chair, your head on a stack of blocks or just your arms straight or your arms, your hands on the back of the chair. And also, if you've got compression in your hips, in that QL area into the lower back, you can bring your hips side to side as you exhale. That can really help get into any of that compression in the side body that affects the hips and the lower back. So pick your medicine. And just breathe here. If you like in your head, om. Inhale, exhale, namo. I let go and surrender. It's very helpful to do four bends when you find yourself anxious, irritated, stressed, inhale, coming up and ruminating about some state, something going on in your life or in your head. It's a way of getting out of the head back into the body, and just letting that emotion run through and get processed. So those four bends, very helpful for just processing any kind of emotion, second chakra. All right, so we're gonna go into more balance poses now. So inhale, we've done this one before for legs and feet. We're gonna focus on hips today. Inhale, arms coming up, front. And exhale, you're gonna bring one leg up and really stand on the opposite one and really strengthen that opposite hip and flexing um, the left and strengthening the right. Inhale, coming up. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, stiram and sukham in action. So sukham is flexibility, softness. That's my right leg. And strengthening the left, I'm mirroring. Inhale, so feeling that opposition and union between what is soft and what is strong in your body. Try to feel both. Another area of strength is the core from the pelvic floor up, lifting that leg. You want to keep that leg soft. Inhale, coming up. By having strength. So chapter 247 in the Yoga Sutras, it says, then in order to practice Stira Sukhamasana, that strength and softness, that harmony, in order to get that harmony, you have to let go of any unnecessary tension in your body. Just, you could think about that. How can I soften, let go of any unnecessary efforting? And by doing that, my effort becomes very efficient. And we all know that from life, right? 
flow theory talks about that. The, the uh, challenge has to be just right. If you're too challenged, you don't go into flow. If you're not challenged enough, you don't go into flow. It's just right to get that infinite harmony, that ananta. Ananta is one of the names of Adishesha or Patanjali, who we started with today. And we're going to do Ananta's pose later, Anantasana. The sleeping Vishnu pose. I'll tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> Sometimes good to have story time while you're doing these kinds of poses, eh? All right, just finishing up. So finding that strength and that softness. Can you feel both in your body, that softness there, and that strength holding everything up? So the hips very much need that. That's a great metaphor for the hips. They need to be um, flexible, but often they can't be without having all this strength holding them up they'll grip when you're not strong here in your core to the side inhale arms coming up exhale bringing your left leg to the side and your hands can go down or they could stay up and today just for fun we're going to actually tilt to the side so I think last time we did it straight up and down inhale coming up so you could do it with your torso facing straight. This is different. It gets more into the hips. You can do that, or you can ease off a little bit, and then you're working the stabilizing leg more. So it's a different use of the hips. So you choose. So this is very much like the pose we're going to be moving to Anantasana, side leg lifts. Sleeping Vishnu pose. And Vishnu sleeps on a bed of snakes. And that snake, his name is Adishesha or Ananta. And the snake represents this balance between the soft and the hard, strength and flexibility. And when they come into harmony, ananta, another meaning of ananta, adishesha, patanjali is harmony. When they come into a state of harmony, the opposites of our human life no longer bother us. They no longer trigger us. So the body doesn't bother us. The environment doesn't bother us. People outside of us with their virtuous and non-virtuous behavior, usually the non-virtuous doesn't bother us. And we're just gonna do one more. That's the promise of yoga, is that incredible resilience. So I am not there but I am hopeful one day I will be. Exhale. And Patanjali says the asanas, doing these poses, these asanas, which bring us into a state of presence, asa, help us get there. Very embodied practice. We're gonna to go to the back. Inhale, arms coming up, front. Exhale, bringing the arms down by your sides and bringing one leg up. I'm gonna bring my left. You can come to just here, or if you can go further, tip a little further, 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 see where you go. You've got the chair there if you wanna use that. Inhale, coming up, add your arms when you can, and try to stay balanced on that one foot until just the last minute. And exhale, other side, engage pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, chest falls. Hands can go back, they can be front, they can also be sides, drop that hip that's back. Inhale, coming up. So another variation is just arm side, this can be easier for balance. And more neck and shoulders when you do the arm side. So make that choice, try to drop that hip that's up. You will want to go up, so try to drop it down. 
It's a lot harder bringing the arms forward. You can also bring the hands to the wall. Do something like this, the back of the chair, seat of the chair starts to go into a different pose when you come down further. But pick your medicine, okay? This one's wonderfully strengthening for the back, for the hips, the back of the hips, the glutes, probably feeling some stretch in the standing leg as well as strength, lots of stirum strength and sukum going on. And you've got this bilateral stimulation of the body brain happening, which we know from research gives us more stress resilience and pain resilience. And just finishing up with a reversion you're doing. and finding your samastiti. Notice how you feel. So balancing poses, I also have found in my own practice and those of my students. You tend to be quite vata, as we say in Ayurveda, or a little bit, as I say, skittish. <laughs> it's like, blah, flying all over the place. You get stressed or you start spinning in your head about various things, if you tend towards that air, air quality, these balancing poses can be a very good way to bring you into stillness. So use that as a resource in your life and just notice how you feel, maybe you feel that way. Now I'm feeling my hips really turned on right now. We're gonna play with that a bit more. I'm teaching this a little bit differently than I did Sunday, if you were there Sunday, it's always a, uh, Every class is a bit different. I'm going to put a block between my thighs. You can also use a bolster or a pillow. And where you put it is up to you. Um, really doesn't matter. It's, you know, it depends which uh, niyasa you want to use. Niyasa is to touch the body and direct prana there. So you decide where you want your block and a pillow can be really nice for this because you can squish in a bit more. So we're gonna exhale, we're gonna bend our knees and we're gonna push into that block or maybe a bolster or a pillow and inhale, straighten. We're gonna add some arms, inhale, arm sides. Feel that radiance of the sun. Now we're gonna feel branches of a tree. Let's go to a tree, exhale. Feel you're hugging a tree, feel its trunk, feel its roots, and inhale, feel that, feel that tree with its branches, maybe leaves starting to sprout, show their spring green colors. Exhale, feeling that trunk of the tree, the roots of the tree, all the way down to the feet, to the earth. I sometimes do this with a full bolster. I do that on the Sunday class. You can see that it's already posted. If you wanna take a look. So you can keep that going or come to the wall. You might try changing the block. At this point, I'm gonna put my block more between my knees. Now we're just going to start by squeezing the block as we exhale again. This is lovely to do with a pillow or bolster. And inhale, release. Inhale, arms coming up. And exhale, squeeze. And as you squeeze, you should feel your transverse abdominis turning on, the lower abdominals. Or just do this in the center. Inhale, stand. Exhale, squat. Or stay in your squats in the center of the room. So this is Ardha Ukatasana, half squat, 
wonderful for strengthening and balancing the hips. I can't say enough about squats for that roll in the hips, working on adduction. And you should be feeling this all the way down to the feet. This is too, too much. You can just do a forward bend or go up and down from the squat. Do that tree hug squat. And the next one, we're going to come forward. I'm going to release that block. We'll just rest in a forward bend. You can have your hands at the wall and work on that traction of the spine if that feels better for your legs, your feet, your back, or keep that length and come forward. This is for the lower back and the legs. And gradually coming up. And come to some stitchy. Notice how you feel in your feet and your legs. So if you have one hip that doesn't turn on as easily as the other, you might be feeling a lot of activity there. That it's working now, that it's woken up those muscles, especially those abduction muscles. Okay. I also feel the adductors, the inner thighs. We're going to go to our chair lunges. So you can do this uh, with holding blocks or the chair or the floor or um, a wall. I'm going to show a few versions. I will try to do that. Bring your left foot up on the chair. The chair against the wall is very helpful. And the back foot can be turned out, or if you can, make it parallel to the front. So just find your lunge to begin with. So if this is too much of a stretch for your hip flexor, you can use the blocks. Okay, that feels better, that angle. Or you can use a countertop or a wall. This can be a nice variation. All right, if you want a bit more height, so I'm looking at you and your choices. Seems like most of you on the chair are blocks. Okay, let's do it. So whatever version you've chosen, you're gonna inhale, lunge, and bringing your front knee towards the toes, and exhale, release. We're gonna add the opposite arm. Inhale, coming forward, exhale, release, just that. You can do this without the chair, but on the ground, that feels better for you. It's a pretty intense stretch for many people. Finding your ujjayi pranayama, constricting the throat. When you're ready, staying in the lunge, Exhale, bend the back knee if you can. You do this with your front foot on the floor as well. Inhale, straighten. And exhale, come back a little bit or a lot. You could have your hands on the back of the chair, on the seat of the chair. I'm gonna try to square off that back foot. Inhale, lunge. You can have your arms up to make it harder. Exhale. Bend the back knee. I'm holding the back of the chair. Inhale, straighten just for a bit more stability and exhale back. So this is working with the legs, stretching the legs, hamstrings, the calves, the hip flexors, and the thigh of the back leg. You might feel quite a stretch in your thigh. 
can tend to get tight there. That's an area that can get really tight when we're weak in those deep six stabilizing muscles of the hips. So again, try to see where can I release any unnecessary tension in my body or mind as I do this. When you're challenged, you have to work on that a bit more. That's why it said the asana practice makes you like a vajra, a diamond, very strong and clear. Again, the word asana, posture often translated, actually means practicing being present. Just finishing up your last one, bringing that front leg back any way that you can. Coming to a downward facing dog at the chair or on the floor. And you can inhale, look up. Exhale, bend the knees, look back, or go into a full upward facing dog at the chair. Bring both hips forward and both hips back. It's great for the hips, lower back. I'm bending my knees when I go back to get a bit more stretch into the lower back. Inhale, lift away from the chair. Usually people collapse into the shoulder. So try to lift away. Just one more. And this is often a preparation I might do before I did sun salutations. That kind of preparation for the hips. Just FYI, other side, I'm bringing my right foot on the, the chair. My back foot can be turned out or not. This uh, front foot could be on the floor if it feels better. You could be holding onto blocks or a table or the seat of a chair actually for that matter. So when you're ready, inhale, bending that front knee towards the toes. So it's going beyond the ankle probably. Bringing the arm up, maybe coming off that back heel or not. Exhale, release. That's your choice whether you bring that back heel off. Inhale. And Exhale. So the reason I'm using just one arm is to really lengthen that whole left side from the foot all the way to the hand, the whole side being lengthened. And that might be your pose, just that, okay? You might not go further. And notice which side feels better than the other. Usually there will be one. When you're ready after around six times, can you stay in the pose and bend the back knee, maybe holding onto the back of the chair or the wall. Inhale, straighten that back knee, stretch the psoas. Exhale, stretch back. You'd be holding onto the wall, the back of the chair or the seat of the chair, and maybe stretch the front leg completely. Inhale, coming forward, you could add on the arms. I didn't show this on the other side. Exhale, bend the back knee. Inhale, coming up. Again, if you add the arms, it's a bit more balance work. Exhale, coming back. Keep this going six to eight times. You could stay in any of these positions. If you're feeling like you want to stay for a few breaths and stretch out rather than move at this point. And this I use for the lower back and hips, that combination. So I teach it sometimes in the hip class, sometimes in the lower back class. And just finishing up, 
usually come out of it from the lunge and loop my arm underneath the thigh, bring it back, I'm going to my chair down dog. You can just stay here, try to make those feet even. And then when you're ready, going through a plank and coming forward, scooping the hips forward, lifting away from the chair. Feel the effect of that in the hips and the lower back. Exhale, pelvic floor, lower belly, belly button in, coming back, bend the knees and coming forward. When you're ready, staying in the down dog position. Your hands can be on the seat of the chair or the back of the chair. Just bringing your hips side to side, feeling that side of the hip, lower back, maybe into the upper back. You can bend one knee or keep the legs straight. And turn the head also towards the hip going out. That can feel nice. This is Arda Uttanasana, half forward bend at the chair. It's been very helpful for lower back issues and lower back issues linked to tightness in those deep six muscles stabilizing the hips. When you're ready, coming forward. Back spasms, I often use that pose to help people move out of that. Can notice how you feel. And I feel very ready myself to <laughs> sit down. So if you wanna move that chair or not, I'm gonna actually leave mine there. And we're gonna just sit down right away and do some breath work. Let's just see how those hips are working. Now, today we didn't do much external right rotation, so I'm gonna actually sit in Varirasana, which I feel I prepared my hips for really well. And you can sit at the chair, of course. And uh, in this pose, you can put a block underneath your buttocks. You can also sit, I haven't shown this pose in a while. You can sit on a block like this. Okay, that can be quite comfortable. Or you can put a bolster between your legs. Okay, so I'm gonna choose that as my seat, my asa, my asana, rather, sorry, my asana. And in this position, we're gonna do some pranayama. We're gonna do pratiloma ujjayi pranayama. Inhale both nostrils. Exhale, left nostril. I'm going to start with my right hand, and I'm not mirroring for this one. Inhale, center. Actually, I will mirror. It's going to confuse you. Maybe. Exhale, right nostril. The next one, I'll, I'll mirror for you. So we're just starting with that. Now we're going to add on the other piece. So inhale, both nostrils. Extra left nostril, I'm gonna mirror for you. Inhale left. Exhale both. So I'm just showing it now, it's a bit faster. Ujjaya, Ujjayi Pranayama when you're using both nostrils. Inhale, both nostrils, constrict the throat. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Exhale, both. This pranayama is used for balancing the brain and the body by extension. So it's like an M. Inhale, both nostrils. Exhale, left. Inhale, left. Exhale, both. 
inhale both, exhale right, inhale right, exhale both. Keep this going your own timing. I like to switch my hands as I do this. So when I work with my left side, I use my right hand. And when I work with my right side, I use my left hand. Half closing the nostril you're breathing out of, fully the other one. Now, if you like, start to count the breath. Inhale four to 12 seconds. Hold after inhale, half the length of your inhale. Exhale four to 12 seconds. Hold after exhale, half the length of your exhale. And keep that going. The hold after exhale and inhale is a choice. Do not do this with heart disease or other circulatory problems where you feel pressure in the head. Okay, so skip those holds. The hold after inhale is stimulating. The hold after exhale is relaxing. Pick your medicine according to how you feel right now, or you can do no holds. So individualize it. Classically, we do 12 rounds. We're probably going to be more like six today. When you're done, just go into a meditation, watching the breath. Inhale, Om, exhale, Namo, if you like. Inhale, let, exhale, go. And just finishing up your round that you're on. And just moving into that meditative breath. Observing the rise and fall of the belly.
Inhale on, exhale my more. If you like, you can put the tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. And I invite you to bring in a bhavana, a felt and sensed visualization. Bring in a bhavana of balance. So it could be lying on a hammock. You could do this lying down if you prefer. Could be sitting on a swing. You could just be the feeling of rocking in the wind. sitting in a rocking chair or something like that, just feeling the wind rock you. So pick your image. With this image, I'm going to be chanting chapter 2, 46, 47, and 48 of the Yoga Sutras. But the balance, the ananta, the infinite harmony created by balancing these opposites of strength and softness, of attention without tension, releasing unnecessary tension, and Relaxation without laziness. So how can you be relaxed yet aware? Pian tato tuandua na vida saha stira sukama sanam prayat na shaitilaya ananta sama patipyam tato tuandua na vida saha stira sukama sanam Prayatna shaitilaya ananta samapatibhyam tato 
Tuan tuan api kasaha, stira suka masanam, prayat na shaitilia, ananta sama patipyam, tatua tuan tuan api kasaha, stira suka masanam, prayat na shaitilia, Ananta sana kasaha, tato dwan dwan abigasaha, stira suka masanam, prayat na shaitya, ananta sami kasaha, tato dwan dwan abigasaha, tato dwan dwan abigasaha. learning to let go of any unnecessary tension in the body and mind. May our actions become very efficient. Sinking into that infinite harmony, Ananta. No longer affected by the opposites. Namaste, Namaskaram. Thank you very much. <laughs>